Welcome to this presentation of 6RD for 6 rapid deployments. Um, this is uh, about myself. My name is Fred Bovey, so I'm in the industry for about 20 years and 15 years in IPv6. You can find me on the internet and write me an email to ask any questions or uh, follow me on Twitter, on uh, call me on Skype, uh, you're welcome. I will be very happy to answer any question. Um, so this is about transition um, and where 6R these towns uh, since the beginning of IPv6. Um, so at the beginning of IPv6, um, the first transition protocols were static tunnels and dual stack, and then came uh, automatic tunnel like 624. Uh, but 624 was uh, quite nice for um, uh, home users and maybe small enterprise, but not really a good idea for uh, uh, large enterprise and not at all for service provider. So actually it was customized and uh, uh, by your service provider and it became 6RD which um, allowed uh, to uh, start uh, providing services uh, for service provider uh, will only have an IPv4 backbone and do not plan to upgrade to IPv6 immediately. So 6RD came from 624. So what was 624? 624 was actually the first effort to, um, uh, for automatic uh, tunneling of IPv6 traffic in IPv4. So automatic uh, was solving two problems. It was solving a problem that it was providing automatically an IPv6 address to the customer. How? Because actually a block was reserved for, for 624. This block started with 2002, and following 2002, you find uh, the IPv4 public address of your uh, IPv4 uh, internet address. So, for instance, if your IPv4 internet public address was 192.68.0.1, then your IPv6 prefix would be 2002.4.624, then C0.4.192.44.468, and 1.4.1. So this was your uh, slash 48 prefix, and which gives you 16 bit for subnetting to address uh, many ho many subnets in your uh, private network and many hosts on each subnet. It was also uh, automatic because with 624 you did not have to configure. Um, the, the, the remote IPv4 address of the tunnel because since the uh, IPv4 address of the destination was coded in the IPv6, so it was actually the destination of the tunnel was derived from uh, the destination IPv6 address. So that was the two uh, services for 624. Then to reach the IPv6 internet, uh, many um, 624 relay were um, introduced and uh, um, were permitting to uh, access the IPv6 internet. So 624.ipv6.microsoft.com, for instance, or the Anycast address 192.99.88.1 was your, uh, uh, your gateway to the IPv6 internet. So this was very nice for um, uh, home user, for instance, because you don't have to request any IPv6 address and you have an immediate access to the IPv6 internet. But for a service provider, it was not really nice because you could not customize this 2002 prefix 
And if you cannot customize this prefix, it also means that you must rely on a public 624 relay for your internet access. So you may imagine that you could uh, install a 624 relay to get out of your uh, domain to reach the Internet, but you could not control uh, the way back from the IPv6 Internet uh, back to your network. So for a service provider or a large enterprise, it was not really a nice solution. Very, very attractive for um, a home user, but not really for a large enterprise or for service provider to provide a service. So actually, 6RD um, keeps the, the idea of 624, which was a, a very simple method to provide uh, access to the IPv6 internet, but they customized the prefix to allow any uh, service provider uh, prefix to replace the 2002 uh, prefix. So the relay was replaced by border router or border relay and uh, the CPE is called actually a residential gateway. And uh, for uh, the inventor of uh, 6RD, the residential gateway CPE is provided by uh, the service provider and it is also providing a television on IP and a, a telephone and uh, it is a triple play uh, offer actually. So the um, the residential gateway, the CPE, is now supported on more and more devices. Uh, Cisco supported in iOS. In uh, latest release of iOS, you have uh, both uh, the resi residential gateway function and the border relay functions, which are provided. And on Linux, you also have the uh, residential gateway uh, functionality, which is provided uh, to access um, the IPv6 internet from your IPv4 uh, internet access, should your ISP support 6RD. On the residential gateway, the configuration is pretty straightforward. So you need to configure the ISP6 or the IPv6 prefix, uh, which replaces the 2002 uh, 624 prefix. Then um, in IPv4, you don't need to code the full 32 bits because uh, if you use public, ad if the service provider use public addresses, uh, then all addresses may start with the same uh, prefix. So it might be uh, enough to use maybe 16 bits to identify a CPE within the service provider. And the last thing you need to configure is the 6RD border relay IPv4 address, which is usually an Anycast address to support load balancing. And this configuration can be uh, provided automatically with many different methods. One is the HCP using option 212. So this is your uh, 6RD um, example. Uh, so the 2002 prefix has been replaced. So remember that you may not need to, to, to uh, put all the 32 bits of your IPv4 uh, address if all addresses start with 6498, for instance. It may be enough to identify the CPE using the last 16 bits. And in this case, you still have uh, so subnetting uh, information uh, which can be uh, provided so you can 
configure many subnets within your home network. Then finally, you find the interface ID. So this is the example of my own uh, 6RD configuration at home. So the right prefix for free is 2A010E slash uh, 26. This is the right prefix. Then you have uh, two bits which are uh, actually to identify uh, 6RD. And finally, uh, you find, not finally, but then you find the IPv4 address. So in my case, it is the full IPv4 address, the 32 bits. So 52 is 82 in decimal. Uh, F2 is 2342 uh, and so on. So my own IPv4 address is here coded in green. 52F2, uh, 6D, and so on. Uh, the last uh, the zero here after 34 uh, could be used for subnetting, but for the moment it is not supported by free. So basically it is just an unused uh, uh, space. So it is zero. So here is some uh, testing I did from my uh, my Mac at home, testing my IPv6 access, uh, and also I am running a web server from home, and uh, I don't have to configure any NAT translation or whatever. My my server is reachable from the internet. And I have also uh, configured the DNS entry, so you can try ipv6.fredbovi.com. So this this is actually a, a test uh, platform, so it is not always online. So please, if you try and if it is not online, uh, then uh, try. Maybe later it will be. On the other hand, I also have a web server which is. Um, which is hosted by my, another service provider, which is www.fredbovi.com, which is also reachable uh, with IPv6, and you can also reach uh, and you can see a trace route here. So we can see that the first hop is actually reaching the border relay of free. It is 2A01E352F26D340. So this is only one hop where, where actually it may be many hops, uh, but it is the uh, tunneling which make it appear as a one hop only. So this is the configuration for uh, the whole thing. Uh, at home, I am using IPv4 uh, private addressing, so which means that I am using NAT44 to translate my IPv4 uh, path, actually, because I, am, I, I can have many IPv4 private addresses which are translated to only one IPv4 public address. And I have many IPv6 addresses, uh, I have at least uh, four, uh, four IPv6 hosts at home, and each one is using its own interface ID and its own IPv6 address. And it is just, uh, um, when I go to the internet, it is just encapsulated to the border relay and then decapsulated to reach the internet. So this is the uh, again how it is working. If my destination IPv6 is uh, in the same domain, uh, the residential gateway can figure it out with the destination IPv6 address. So if the destination IPv6 address is within the same domain, then uh, the uh, IPv4 encapsulation is directly, uh, the destination is directly uh, the uh, residential gateway of my uh, 
my uh, my destination inside my domain. But if the destination IPv6 is not within the domain, then the residential gateway encapsulates my packet to the 6RD border relay, which decapsulates it and sends it in IPv6 to the IPv6 internet to reach the uh, destination. And in the opposite direction, the uh, opposite operation is performed, the IPv6 packet is received and encapsulated in IPv4, so it can reach my residential gateway and then finally reach my host uh, using the interface ID. So usually the border relay are using any cast addresses. This is possible because the protocol is a stateless. So uh, you can have load balancing and you can have many uh, border relay uh, to load balance the traffic uh, for the domain. If you uh, need to save IPv4 addresses because uh, we have less and less available IPv4 uh, addresses, it becomes now possible uh, also to use double NAT uh, with 6RD, which means that the uh, IPv4 private address is not, as it is in my case, translated to a public address here but to another private address, and finally the private is translated to a public uh, here on the 6RD border relay. So this is also something which is possible. So here is the uh, free uh, diagram of how it is implemented using the ASR, ASR1K as the 6RD gateway, and um, so the, the offer includes ADSL and fiber to the home uh, with native IPv6 uh, only. And that's pretty much it. So 6RD is a proven technology. It was introduced by free uh, many years ago, it was in 2007, and it has proven that it was scalable and it was uh, safe and, and it, since the beginning that it was started, um, Free did not have any problem with uh, this implementation. So today this is a solution, but more and more uh, service providers who don't have uh, MPLS backbone are used because it is also the most cost-effective solution. So it is really a, the, the solution for all service providers who need to provide immediate IPv6 access over an IPv4 backbone. So thank you very much for attending this 6RD presentation. And if you need anything more about 6RD, any more information about transition protocols or whatever, please feel free to contact me. You have my email here. I have written many blogs, uh, uh, posts to talk about transition to IPv6. You can also find me on Skype or Twitter. Don't hesitate, I would be very happy to talk to you and discuss about um, anything about IPv6 uh, with a lot of pleasure. Thank you very much and bye-bye.